Hey there, Navy.5184 here, and welcome to my reaction to episode 7 of Star Wars The Acolyte titled Choice. This is the penultimate episode, so really looking forward to it. I am going to admit though, um, prior to this week, my biggest fear, because based on the way they ended it last week, it almost feels like it's probably going to be a flashback episode, except it's going to show everything like that really happened. And... Honestly, that worries me a little bit because the way things have been kind of working with the show is it feels like every time we get some answers, there's more questions that arise. And I just don't know how they're going to really pull that off, you know, in a satisfying manner with just one episode to go, that being the finale, where you know that there's got to be a final showdown of some sort. You know, I have no idea how they're going to do it. Um, but then again, maybe all those questions will be answered in this episode to where maybe they don't have to answer anything in episode eight. I have no idea. It's just, and it's kind of what I said at the end of last week where I wish that maybe instead of just eight episodes that they would just do 10 episodes because, you know, with everything that feels like that is still such a mystery, I, it just feel, I'm, I'm just really afraid that everything's going to be rushed and it could very well ruin what could possibly be a really good finale but you know I'm not going to hold any judgment yet you know I'll wait and see what this holds and honestly based on the thumbnail it probably is going to be a flashback episode considering that Kanaka is the one on the thumbnail so it probably is but then again maybe only half the episode will be a flashback since we already basically got the idea of what happened but it's probably just going to more or less be well, actually, you know what? I don't know. Because we gotta think. Uh, I, I completely forgot about Osha with the helmet on. So maybe she's gonna see, you know, events maybe more from a dark side slash Sith point of view. Or as maybe Soul will tell May the actual truth of what's going on. I don't I have no idea. So I don't know. This could be a full flashback episode. I was gonna say maybe it's only half since we've already had like the flashback and it could just be soul really explaining what happened to um the coven and everything so obviously it feels like there had to have been some sort of battle in order for all of them to be dead and i even re-watched episode three and even some reactions and i never noticed that torben was wounded so there was definitely a fight that went down so i'm very curious to see what happened to make that fight go down who instigated and everything there's a part of me that would be very expecting that coral probably really instigated everything but considering you got the jedi kind of imposing on you know their home in a way you know maybe it was just more self-defense i don't know uh, maybe that's something we'll find out in this episode um i think that's really all i got for there so we'll go ahead and get started and uh here we are with episode seven of star wars acolyte choice hey there thanks for stopping by and i appreciate you being here if you enjoy the content and would like to give some extra support to the channel feel free to check the description for various ways to do so some which will include an affiliate link to dubby uh, which you use you get a 10 percent off your order and also a link to my merch store which is constantly running promotions and deals as well as a link to my patreon page which you can get exclusive perks and content Naturally, liking the video and leaving a comment helps as well. Thanks again, and I will catch y'all down the road. And I want to go home to Coruscant. And there's no one here, and if we were going to find something, we probably would have found it by now. We are looking for our Bajans. A concentration of force energy centered around a location. So what exactly is it that they're doing that's going to discover this? I mean, obviously, we know what the Vergence is. It's got to be Osha and May. So, follow the river. We haven't covered the Northlands yet. Meet us back at the camp. Okay. Uh, what's he see? Oh. So this right here is the start of episode three. Uh, there it is. So he saw everything. In 
Indara, can you read me? We are not alone. Indara, can you read me? Wow. So that's how everything started. It's be because of the fact that there's life on that planet that was listed as lifeless. They're looking for a virgins, and then he just stumbled upon the twins. So they actually really did not know that that planet was inhabited. Because I know that was something in episode three that I kind of agreed with Mother Anasea about was, you know, how did the Jedi not know that, you know, that the place was inhabited? But they actually did not know. Maybe they're a little less faultless than I was initially led to believe, but still a lot of episode left to find out. We'll see. I think they are witches. We should return to the ship, ask the council for guidance. The witches prepare for a ceremony tonight. What if the girls are in danger? Does he think they're gonna... Does he think that Osha and May are gonna get sacrificed? I'm going in alone. It's too risky to go in as a group. They'll take it as a threat. There are over 50 of them. Mm. We should go as a team. Fine. But we must be vigilant. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. And Dara is really speaking a lot of sense here. Soul is extremely nervous. So they did technically break in, but at least Endara wanted to do the most possible to make it realize to make it, you know, see that she's not a threat. You're trespassing. Forgive our intrusion. We thought this planet was uninhabited. Which is actually true. What the? Oh, uh, what is? We've traveled so far only to become trapped on this planet. A strong and good Jedi. But you have natural desires you suppress. That sounds awful Sith-like. I would not keep you from what you want. I would always let you have what you need. What is her end game here? Ask, ask me. Ask. Well, this whole time, I thought she was the sane one of the witches. Now I'm starting to question that. I want to return to Coruscant. Neil. That's what that was. Wow. Okay. I would love to know what happened during that part of everything but seeing everything that happened beforehand is actually interesting which makes me have a really bad feeling about the role Torben plays in all of this oh she's too old to join the order i feel she's meant to be my padawan her coven will never let her leave they mocked her sister with dark <clears throat> magic ceremonial markings are customary in many cultures in the galaxy but osha did not have one I believe she wants to leave with us. Do not confuse what Osha wants with what you want. So this is interesting. Why is Sol feeling such a connection with Osha? And Indara is really, really seeing like the real voice of reason amongst everybody. Is your marking a part of Ascension? Ascension must be very important to include a marking like that. Mama says, Ascension means Osha and I will lead the coven. Everyone must be sacrificed to fulfill their destiny. Can I go now? Oh, oh, okay, something just hit me. The way she said that, that's not what she said, but the way she said it, oh boy. Now he really thinks they're in danger. The council said no. Oh, that's a twist. Bringing the twins to Coruscant or separating them from their coven. They say that we have interfered too much already. Will they let us come home at least? No. Do not alter this little girl's destiny because you have formed an emotional attachment to that her. That is not what's happening here. Th that definitely seems to be what's happening here. Is the twins' blood test results? The M count is very high. Very false sensitive. Their symbionts are the same. They are twins? No. Even identical twins would have different symbionts. The twins were artificially created? Maybe by tapping into a power dense enough to split 
one consciousness into two bodies? Ooh, only a virgin could create that type of power. That actually explains a ton! We just need proof of the virgins, and those girls are the proof. Oh no. So I'll take it home! No, no. oh my. He'll knock and I will take the ship! No, don't send him! Oh lord, those are the wrong two people to send there. Oh, this is not good. So, basically, Torben and Sol probably screwed things up. I must discuss the situation with everyone here. But we will consider your wish when we do so. See, it's weird. I was starting to get a really bad feeling about her after what she did to Torben, but it's hard for me to just look past that she seemed very willing to let Osha go. I'm really going to have to wait and see what happens. The Jedi will not warn you before they attack. She really has a very negative outlook on the Jedi. Oh, wow. Good girl. Get mad. Wow, Coral's really pushing May down a dark path here. It's not her decision to make. But is it ours? You cannot allow Osha to go. Her wish must be considered. You may be their mother. But you are also our leader. Right now, I choose mother. Okay, this really has taken a turn. Witches, arm yourselves! For what? I think they've locked the girls inside. Oh, no. And Torben and Sol are going to think they're in danger. Oh, Lord, this is bad. If I can get close enough, do you think you can make the jump? <laughs> Go. We must stop him before he starts a conflict. Go! I told you we cannot use violence. And I told you I would die before I let the Jedi take my children. Well, she's... So basically, we have two sets of people, frankly, disregarding what their leaders are saying. Oh, what the? Wait a... Wait, wait a minute. Oh! Well, that's a twist. So she didn't want to set the whole thing on fire. I don't even think she wanted to set the book on fire. It looked like that was all an accident because as soon as it started flaming up, she started shaking it. So she didn't even do that on purpose. Oh, my Lord. And everybody made it sound like she did that on purpose. No wonder May is so mad. No wonder you mad. Help! Mama, help! No! Coral, what are you doing? Oh, what the heck is going on here? No! going to let Osha go. She chose you. Oh. Oh, no. You just gave Coral every bit of motivation she needed to try to tear you guys apart. Me. Run! So, so clearly does not want to fight. <laughs> Dang, Torben, go! Torben, nice with that lightsaber. Fight me! He didn't want to fight in the first place. I mean, at least that I can say with confidence. Oh, Lord, what's she doing? Okay, everybody's gone now. You should not have brought him here. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I'm with you, Saul. Same, same. Uh, there really is no other thing other than to say.
when you got a possessed Wookiee. Oh, Lord. Oh, so we do get to see... Oh, I don't know if I'm exactly happy about seeing him do it like this. Oh, but... <laughs> Dude, I don't even want to think about the power of those blows. Oh, I was about to say, Torben, you are not going to match wits with a Wookiee, but, uh... Ooh. Oh. I just saw Corbin's face. So that's where he got all those wounds. It was from Kilnaka. Kilnaka! Kilnaka, no! Uh, he's not going to snap out of it that easily. It's not just one person possessing him. That looks like the whole coven. Ooh. Ooh. Get nice with it, Saul. No, I'm not gonna lie. I really have been loving all the fighting choreography I've been seeing in this show. Oh, Saul, how you gonna get it? Oh, enter Endara. Oh, she's. Oh, she's fighting the witches for control now. Yo, so that's what wiped them out? But how would that wipe them out? I mean, unless it's just the amount of energy that they're using that they just use so much that it just completely just killed them. Kind of like uh, Luke in The Last Jedi, you know, he just used all his life force to you know, do that force projection that, you know, in the end it killed him. I wonder if that's kind of like the same thing going on here. So it wasn't just like a slaughter. They literally only died because Endara was trying to save Kelnaka. Oh, oh. So he's trying to hold up. Oh, he is struggling. He is struggling. So that's why Osha's thing fell. I mean, May's thing fell. It's because Soul couldn't hold on anymore. Wow! I'm not gonna lie though, if any of y'all have seen The Good Son with Macaulay Culkin, serious vibes from that movie right there. Send a message to Coruscant. We're going home. I warned you not to interfere. I warned both of you. I wanted the twins to be safe. With no thought of the consequences. I had to make a choice. Yeah, look at what that choice did. I must face the council. Oh, why would you do that to her? After everything this little girl has lost tonight, you take away her dream as well? Before you throw yourself at the mercy of the council, ask yourself why you made this choice. Man. Poor Adara, she really, she did everything in her power to prevent this, but all because Torben wanted to go home so badly, and Soul's got this huge emotional connection to Osha. Those who dumb went and screwed everything up. What happened? Oh, man. Started on fire. Wow. Wow. Alright, y'all. That was Star Wars The Acolyte Episode 7 Choice. And I'm going to make a couple of admissions here. Uh, first admission is when I did find out, or I should say when it was confirmed, you know, at the beginning that you know that this was a flashback episode was it may not have shown it in my reactions but I, I wasn't too thrilled with that but then things you know things went and this is one of the reasons why I am really heavy in you know not having any sort of preformed opinion or anything like that I mean I kind of say that you know it's weird to say that when I say, you know, it's like, I'm I'm going to be upset if it's this, this, or that. 
you know but at the same time you know i don't kind of like make a final judgment it's not like it's like oh it's exactly what i thought so because because of exactly what just happened here is because even though initially i was upset once i started seeing everything it gave context to so much stuff that i ended up okay with it i gotta say this is a lot better of an episode than i was expecting it to be considering that we already had a flashback episode and the fact it's like thankfully it wasn't like they had so much of episode three in here they did have quite a bit that i felt like they probably could have cut out a little bit but i do think that at least they put in the right parts i guess you could say like it didn't feel like it was done too much i feel like they could have still had less of like some parts from episode three in there but at the same time it didn't feel like it was overused but i digress um just kind of getting the context of everything and seeing how everything really went down i really kind of appreciated the only thing that i still absolutely hate about this is its placement as the penultimate episode because i still don't know how everything's gonna be really wrapped up in one more episode at the very least you know give us an extra episode you know to kind of get to you know kind of like what they did in episode four with day where you know it was them kind of getting to where they needed to go and then at the end that was like okay stuff is about to go down and then you had episode five where everything was going down you know and then you had you know things kind of slow down near the end when everything kind of got done that's how i would would have probably liked for this to go but again I'll wait and see what they got because I kind of felt the same thing with uh, Ahsoka and even Kenobi, even though Kenobi was only six episodes. So, you know, and I was okay with how each of those ended. They, you know, you know, definitely had me, you know, waiting for more, which really, I guess in a way, I think my biggest problem is I'm thinking too much in the sense of everything being wrapped up in one season where maybe this is meant to be a multi-season story so maybe we aren't meant to have all the answers yet which really now that i think about it like that i'm kind of okay with but i still want to kind of see you know what happens between may and osha especially with what we just found out it's like how they seem like such polar opposites of each other and yet they're twins but that's probably the whole thing about it is technically they're the same if, if they really are just one person that was split into two consciousness, that explains so much, especially why they're so different in personalities, desires and everything. The biggest takeaway I got from this is because the biggest thing I was getting here is cover up. You know, they, you know, they went and did something absolutely awful. So they had to cover it up. Yes, there was a cover up, but not to the extent I was expecting. Like, it wasn't the four of them going in there and just wiping out that coven because they wanted the girls. No. It was the Jedi Council said no to training the girls. They didn't want them messing with the coven anyways. And Dara was really being forceful on that. But Torben and his desire to go home so badly and Sol with his feeling that for some reason he had this feeling that Osha was meant to be his Padawan you know they let their emotions and feelings get in the way of good judgment and in the end that is what really wiped out that coven even now that i think about it where's coral i because if she was in with that group of witches that was possessing kelnaka i felt like we were seeing her she was nowhere to be seen after she evaporated so I have a very, and I mean very strong feeling that she is not only still alive, but is going to make an appearance in the finale and probably has something really heavily to do with Kamir. Because maybe that's how Kamir even sought out May. But at the same time, I'm also kind of like still want to know how May survived that fall. Because that was a pretty huge drop. I would love to know how she survived that. That's one answer I really wish I would have gotten. But maybe we'll get that next um, episode. But, but I mean the way I think about it. It's like I feel like 
and that maybe there are things that could have been cut out and they maybe episode four and even a bit of five and six not a whole lot like six i really appreciated that one that felt like a very much needed character arc but there's still some parts in there that i feel like probably could have been cut and kind of make it to where parts of like maybe a quarter of episode five was like in four but i don't know how they could have really done that effectively either which way i feel like this episode here probably would have been better as one episode before because i feel like we need to kind of have an episode kind of like four where they're trying to get to their destination you know and they're, you know they're really trying to solidify everything that's going on and then the end of the episode set up for like the big showdown in which case then episode eight can kind of be solely focused on that by this point all all or at the very least most questions are answered and we're ready for some sort of final you know final resolution to this that's just the way i see it but but outside of just the placement i thought this was actually a really good episode i thought they really did that good because the biggest thing i got about this is is you got the coven yeah they're technically minding their business you know they have their ways of doing things and even the jedi council acknowledged that so i like the fact that there really wasn't any intention to just go off and forcefully take the girls and the council a obviously the whole thing about them being too old you know but then when and was talking about how the council said they've already interfered enough tells them that even though they knew they existed they shouldn't have even messed with them in the first place which really is huge in terms of the reputation for the jedi i believe especially with what i was thinking in my head because to me the jedi were really kind of being set up to be like the big baddie well i shouldn't say the big baddies but in a way villains in this but this really kind of shows that no it was just two jedi that just kind of went on their own against council orders against the orders of you know their superior and you know did what maybe yes they may have thought that what they were doing was right but we saw the end result it's one of those things where sometimes the end you know doesn't justify the means i mean look at everything that 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 incident caused to have happened and then again it's like that old phrase, you know, Mother Anasea kind of said it, how, you know, their noble intentions was going to eventually kill all the Jedi in the galaxy. Oh, if only she knew how true that was. But it reminds me of that saying how the road to hell is paved with good intentions, you know, and um, yeah. And that's a very, I would say if any, if there was any saying that really fit this show that well, it is that saying right there because... Well, I'm going to say Sol was the only one that really had good intentions. Torben was pretty much just selfish and wanted to go home. That was the only reason he was doing anything. So he was willing to do whatever to prove that there was a virgin. So he didn't care what it took. He wanted to go home and he was going to make it happen. I honestly still don't know why Andara sent Sol to go after Torben. That, I think, was a mistake. But I think she was really putting a lot of trust that Sol was just going to bring get Torben and bring him back and not try to interfere with anything but which would explain why she was so mad on the ship after everything went down but you know wow Whew. well that's a big setup so I'm very curious to see I wonder if they're gonna keep the episode of the finale the same length as all the other ones because, again, I just don't know how they're going to get everything answered and settled in just one episode. But we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. But, you know, outside my fears and worries for that, in terms of the episode itself, I thought it was good. It was nice to see a Wookiee with a lightsaber. And, you know, some people may complain about the choreography and everything. But, you know, you think about how strong a Wookiee is. I mean, because you saw how, like, each time you did a hit, how it made Torbid and Soul stumble. And I'm not gonna lie, I really liked uh, Soul's reaction when he saw uh, Konaka was getting possessed. He was like, "Shh, and that's all they got." But you, you know full well what he was thinking. And uh, I'm just saying this: if I was Soul, and you know, and I saw that, I'm pulling a Jay Uso. I'm like, "Yeet and bolt." <laughs> I'm like, I don't want none of that. I'm like, you witches can keep that. I am not messing with that. 
But uh, that just shows the soul is a better man than I, in some ways. <laughs> but either way, that was a really good episode. Really, really good episode. Definitely, probably, uh, I'd probably put that in my top three. You know, if I if I was to rank each episode, I would probably put this at. Like for me, episode five is definitely number one. Whew. I don't know. I, I really enjoyed six too. I might go five, six, and seven as my one, two, three. I'm gonna have to revisit that eventually. I know five is my favorite episode so far in the series, but um, but this one's definitely up there. You know, I, and I think it's just because you know I just felt like I got a lot more context about what was going on, especially when it came to the twins, um, what happened with the coven, and honestly, seeing the fact that at least on both sides really the reason everything went so bad is basically fear and mistrust whereas the main voices of reason were either ignored or killed and that being Endara on the Jedi side well technically you could even say Kanaka because Kanaka was possessed so that's the only reason he did any damage and that was to Torben and Sol but so Kanaka and Endar being, you know, the voices of reasons for the Jedi and Mother Anasea being the voice of reason for the Coven. Granted, I'm still very curious on why they were so dead against Osha leaving. I mean, out, I mean, May was going to stay, but I guess there had to have been something where it had to be either both or none. That's the only thing I can think of, but either which way. I think that's really all I got for this, so I'll just end it by saying once again, I really enjoyed that episode. Looking forward to the finale next week. I uh, hope that will be a good one, and I uh, hope you all enjoyed the reaction as well. Make sure you check out other reactions to the Star Wars Acolyte right there, and uh, I will catch you all down the road. <laughs>